driving into Stalingrad, the Germans seemed invincible, smashing every force that opposed them. But the Soviets held on until waves of reinforcements and the brutal Russian winter helped turn the tide. The defenders then went on the attack and with overwhelming force, slowly crushed the Nazi war machine. Victory, but at an incredible cost. The Soviet losses at Stalingrad were staggering. Over 478,000 troops killed from one battle. To give you a sense of scale, the total number of Canadian combat deaths from all major wars this country has ever participated in is just over 117,000. So the scale of that loss all those years ago has really given the Battle of Stalingrad a mythic status. So Chris Brown took a look at the battle, which for a lot of Russians has become a metaphor for the resilience of the motherland. With her sword raised and mouth open in a scream, the Motherland Call statue is Russia's most powerful symbol of sacrifice, towering more than 20 stories over the battlefield of Stalingrad. She is uh, showing to the west to Berlin and by her sword, she's calling, let's go, come on. Mikhail Shuvarikov is a guide in the long since renamed city of Volgograd. Uh, for all uh, Soviet Russian people, and uh, maybe entire the world, Stalingrad was like the D-Day was for Americans. But uh, Stalingrad was no nothing to compare with D-Day. 1.1 million Soviet soldiers were killed or wounded in this single battle. That's more than all of the U.S. casualties for the entire Second World War. 35,000 soldiers just buried underneath the statue. And just underneath and uh, altogether about 70,000. 70,000 uh, all around. Uh, yeah, all and, around and this memorial. And how many, how many soldiers are there left to find? Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Every year, the fields around the city yield more of Stalingrad's dead. Most buried exactly where they died some still clad in boots and helmets. Zverikov volunteers to take part in the searches. A lot of relatives still have hope to find their relatives, to know anything, uh, where they died, how they died, and just to have a place where to come and uh, to put a flower. This past summer, his team uncovered an astonishing 500 bodies. When you see the bodies laid out on the field, what is that like? It is moving, yeah. Just uh, you hold your breath and thinking what they did. Most will never be identified. At the end of the summer, the remains are laid out with a burning flame next to each body and reburied. Another volunteer, Andrei Areshkin, keeps a collection of items that might link a soldier to a living family member if anyone comes searching. He says the 42-year-old soldier wrote to his wife that he wanted to return home so desperately he stuck two helmets together, hoping in vain that would stop a bullet. Areshkin says the Soviet Union long downplayed the extent of the casualties at Stalingrad, so decades that could have been spent searching were lost. In another 80 years, he says, we will still be finding the dead of Stalingrad. Of the soldiers who are actually there, but a handful remain. Anatoly Kozlov, now just shy of his 97th birthday, is a former tank commander. He now speaks not of the death he witnessed, but of patriotism. Here in Stalingrad, a miracle took place, he said, of the victory over the Nazis. This will likely be the last major commemoration that includes veterans from the battle. But the enormity of the losses ensures Stalingrad's dead 
will remain a constant presence. Chris Brown, CBC News in Volgograd.